Hey guys, my name is Shai and I am so happy to be here because it is the very first day of Aries season. I'm recording this just a few hours after the exact moment of the equinox and <sighs> let's just take a moment to congratulate ourselves. We have made it again. We have made it through another sweep through the dense and complex half of the zodiac sign. I feel like the last six months Honestly, now I can almost feel them like receding from my memory. <laughs> um, I can remember the last two months most clearly, right? We've been through all of the Aquarius energy and all of the Pisces energy and it got so dense and complex and complicated and we had all of these thoughts and concerns and worries and complications and confusions and doubts and fears and just all of it but all of that is draining away like as we speak draining away draining away and this is our moment to step back into ourselves step back into ourselves and just feel the flame burning within and know that you are the flame that cannot be quenched and I'm not even going to talk about uh, astrology or the planets or anything today, like the, the week's transits, because I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it at all. Um, over the last two months, I have been very, very interested in, you know, the planetary transits. I check my chart almost every day just because I'm so interested in it. But right now, this week, I'm just not. Because why would I care what the planets are doing? This is a time for me to focus on my inner flame, my own self. What am I doing? It doesn't matter what the planets are doing. I'm just going to exist independently of them. And that's where I'm at. And that's 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 the whole theme of this whole whole month, the whole, all of Aries season, is to really establish yourself and stabilize your own energy. If we just look peek ahead just a little bit, and this is this is not really a good time to be like worrying about the future. You can be planning for the future and taking action that aligns you with the future, but this is not a month to be worrying about the future. <laughs> but you know, after Aries season, of course, comes Taurus season, and we're gonna have two eclipses, so that is gonna be incredibly transformative. So this, I feel like this Aries season is a gift of stabilizing your own energy to face whatever you develop develop for yourself for the rest of the year, for the rest of the year. And um, yeah, this is going to be a quick video because I, I like, <laughs> this is all about simplification. Simplify, 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 simplify everything. And I was really feeling this last night as I was feeling the, you know, Aries energy bleed through into the last day of Pisces season. And I wrote something down. This is kind of where I'm at. This is what I'm feeling. Um, I don't know if this is going to make sense. Let's see. Let's see what I wrote last night, right? I haven't even checked. <laughs> Simplify your life and your belief system. It is not always about your vibe being off. Sometimes you need to stop inverting yourself to match a complex system. This was like a message from myself to myself because, I mean, you know, if you've been watching these weekly readings, you've been listening to me talk over the past couple of months, it's been... Man, I'm trying to get that camera to focus. It's so, It keeps going off. Oh my goodness, stop! <laughs> Wow, okay, it does not want to cooperate. Are, am I good? Okay. <laughs> That's funny. My my camera is feeling this Aries energy, energy too. It's like, no, I'm going to focus on what I want to focus on. Screw you, person. <laughs> but yeah, like this, simplify your life and your belief system. I And I've been noticing this in private readings as well. Uh, you know, it, it, it's... It's not that we were doing anything wrong. It was absolutely normal and natural in Aquarius in Pisces season to have all, to have this um, curiosity and interest in all of these complex belief systems and all of these just thoughts and other people's teachings and what other people are doing and try to figuring out how everything fits together because we were working on the collective energy, right? Those, like the last two months have been so, so heavily, densely and complexly focused on collective interconnection. And, but now like that's all, that's all draining away. That's all draining away. And that's going to be really healing for anybody who has been feeling this this word in inverting like inversion this inverting of yourself this inverting of yourself um because this is obviously a delicate dance right i don't mean to imply that one of these energies or focuses is better than the other because we simply flow from one to the other one to the other we were in this collective energy where it was all about interconnection and fig and that it you know the aquarius and the pisces energy is also about the dissolution of the ego which is very important and very valuable for our spiritual evolution and all of that and we need to do that um you know releasing bits, bits of your ego that you don't want to carry forward into aries season right you don't want to carry forward with you at, like at all so it's important to do that but um when that gets kind of when that goes on for too long and you know if we want to look at this in terms of the 
the ages, right? We're, you know, the age of Pisces is, is fading away, fading away. So we, we've been, been in the Pisces energy for, you know, over 2000 years and all of that is fading away, fading away because one of the, I don't know how to put it. I don't know what the best word is, but one thing that can happen when Pisces energy is really intense is that there can be this sense of the inversion of the self, right? The inversion of the self. And that can get confusing and tiresome and tedious. And uh, there, there's this theme I've been noticing in private readings where people have been feeling very frustrated. Um, and I've been feeling this too, where it's like people couldn't figure out what they need to do. It's like, what more do I need to do? How do I need to change myself to make myself fit? And there's been this thing of what's wrong with my energy, right? What's wrong with my energy? Am I not manifesting something because my energy is off? Like, is there something off with my vibration? And I mean, yes, sometimes that is true, right? That can absolutely be true. Sometimes if you have something weird in your vibration, that's going to block you from manifesting something or it's going to, you know, block your evolution and stuff like that. So all of that is true. It's all, that's all real and relevant and how healthy for us to explore, but we don't want to be stuck in that energy forever, right? We don't want to be exploring that energy forever. At some point, you know, like the first day of Aries season, you stand up, you shake yourself off, you rise up out of the murk and you go, hey, enough of that, enough of fixing, fixating on what everyone else has been doing, enough on worrying about what's wrong with my energy. And it's just, this is who I am. This is me. I am here and I am this. I am here and I am this. And that's, and that's it, right? And this is so refreshing, right? So, so refreshing. <laughs> and Queen of Pentacles, yes, yes, yes. Standing sovereign in your own energy, completely just creating and curating your own world. And I don't feel like the Queen of Pentacles really concerns herself like unnecessarily about others like the king of Pe the king of pentacles right is more about constructing this like because i really view the queens as introverted and the kings as extroverted okay just to clarify like where i'm coming from on this um it's just the introvert and the extrovert of the same type of energy so the queen of pentacles isn't so concerned about like building this empire and building all of this stuff around her she's just concerned about her own immediate environment and standing in her own energy right she's concerned about her own energy and how that creates her reality, how it materializes her reality. Ace of Swords, brand new, brand new. The Queen of Pentacles, grabbing her sword of power, grabbing her sword of truth and slicing away everything that does not serve. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I went crazy cleaning my bedroom yesterday. Um, like I got rid of all kinds of things. Uh, I, I actually even cleaned up my bookcase, which I've only done once in my entire life, <laughs> when, which is when I moved to a new country and I simply couldn't take all my books with me. So I, for me to have donated a, a huge selection of a bunch of books that I, like beloved books, books I love by my favorite authors that, that I've been carrying around for 20 years, some of them, right? Um, and and I, I took them off my shelf yesterday and I was like, I don't need these anymore. What do I need these? And, he, and I, I knew that even if I got rid of a book that I wanted later, I could simply buy the book again. I could get the ebook. I could get the audio book. It's like I could just get the book again, you know? So there were some books that, you know, I still have a bookcase full of books and there's still some I keep because I really wanted them because I know I'm probably going to read them or because they're like out of print and there are no ebook versions of them and I and I kept those, right? But I got rid of a ton of books. I like rotated my bed 90 degrees so it's on, on a new like geographical axis, rearranged the whole room and it's like, yes, so fresh, so fresh, so brand new. And so many things are gone, are gone out of my energy. Like they're, they're gone, they're no longer like rendering. And this is something that's been coming up for me. If there's something you can see, then that's your consciousness rendering it, right? Like your, your consciousness is rendering this bowl right here. I mean, obviously the whole video, right? But like specifically, everything represented by this bowl, you know, is being rendered by your consciousness because it's here. So if this bowl, you know, if, if for some reason, if I woke up in the morning and decided I didn't like this bowl's tone, right? I, I, would, I would get rid of it. I would give it away or <laughs> just toss it, you know, because even when it's not singing, it is still rendering in my consciousness because it's like in, in my awareness, right? Because I'm seeing it. So getting rid of stuff that's sitting around your house is massively, massively powerful for adjusting and curating what energies you're bringing forward with you. And if you have, just, just an aside, if you haven't, um, 
Like if everything I'm talking about it hasn't quite clicked yet for you, if you're still feeling like the Pisces hangover, some, some people could be very sensitive to it and still be feeling the Piscean Aquarian hangover, especially because we do still have a bunch of planets in Pisces and Aquarius and that's still definitely operating in the background, right? Um, don't worry, this, this Aries energy is just going to amp up and get more and more intense. It's just building all the way to the end of March where we have the Aries new moon. So you haven't missed out. This is, it's all coming. It's all coming. Yeah, <laughs> eight of cups. This whole time I've been talking about like, you know, walking away from things, letting things go, moving on, moving forward. Here, here is the eight of cups coming up to confirm that this is walking into your new future, but knowing that it is a spiritual journey, right? It is a spiritual journey. The eight of cups is your spiritual journey and it's that walking away energy. So anything anything that leaves your life over the next month simply doesn't it simply is just not relevant for you for anymore right and you can always pick it up again later if you so choose just like I get rid of a book I can go buy the book again it's not like it's gone for me forever there's a message here about you you don't need to like hang on to things that you might want to access again right? It's, um, this is a little bit of a hangover from, you know, the 20th century and the last, you know, thousands and thousands of years where I'll just keep using the examples of books, right? Um, even, you know, even 20 years ago, it was more important to collect books or to collect CDs, right? To collect CDs, you'd have to have your, I used to have a, an enormous like $3,000 CD collection. And now I don't have, I don't even have a single CD anymore. Cause I, I didn't, when I moved uh, to the US, I didn't take any of my CDs with me. Cause why, why would I, right? Why would I have done that? I can, by at that point, by like 2014, right? Our music was all digital and I didn't need CDs anymore. So, you know, it used to be, it used to be more important and more relevant and more fun to collect things like books and CDs and stuff, right? Because it was harder to, to reaccess it. But now we no longer need to be storing things. We don't need to store things the way we used to because you can just get the ebook. You can just go buy the ebook. You can sign up for, you know, like what is the Amazon has that like Kindle reading subscription where you pay 10 bucks a month and you just read as many books as you want, right? And nobody buys CD. I mean, we, we very, most people rarely buy CDs, right? We off, we most are, most of us are just using some kind of streaming music streaming service, right? You don't need to be collecting these things anymore. You, you can just stream it. You can just access it. And of course, all of this is a metaphor for what's going on with your consciousness. You don't need to be even storing your own memories anymore. You don't need to be storing anything. You don't need to be storing like you don't need to memorize anything. <laughs> we know that, right? You got Google, you don't need to memorize anything. I know, you know, do you remember your high school math teacher saying, what are you gonna do? You, like, if you can't do math in your head, you're gonna be walking around with a calculator in your pocket. And well, it turns out, yeah, yeah, you are gonna be walking around with a calculator in your pocket. And I know there there are concerns about going, okay, but we want to, what, what, is that, what does that say about our self-sufficiency, right? But um, honestly, I feel like it's time to put that aside because that mindset is going to be holding uh, holding back our rapid evolution and we move into this free flowing, free accessing, free streaming of consciousness, right? Free streaming of consciousness. Um, trust that, you, that you, know, you can stream your consciousness in every moment and you don't need to be hanging on to anything. You don't need to be hanging on to anything. Nothing, nothing that you don't even need to remember things that you've read. You don't need to remember things that people have said. You don't need to remember things that you said. You don't need to remember who you are yesterday. Just allow yourself to free stream your consciousness in every moment. And um, again, that's not even better or worse than the way we used to operate even, even five years ago, right? It's not better or worse. It's just that's where consciousness is going, right? We've explored the old way or, you know, the, we explored the way of crystallized consciousness and of things needing to stick around and be stored, right? And now we're moving into a phase where we are exploring free streaming consciousness and neither is better or worse. We, we, we go through periods in the universe where we do one and then we do the other and there's going to be other phases as well. This is just a phase of free streaming consciousness. And we're going to be exploring that in microcosm for all of Aries season, right? So that's it. I'm done. I'm going to go enjoy the first day of spring. Um, sending you guys so much love and light. Bye. Okay, that was a false alarm. I actually finished <laughs> the video, went and uploaded it and watched it. And you know what? Every time in the video where I said something about time, um, I got this weird feeling. I got a weird feeling, uh, like when I said age of Pisces, I got a weird feeling when I said 
thousands of years. I got a weird feeling and I was like, what is this? What is this? What is this? And it left me with such a strange feeling. I felt like I couldn't upload the video without addressing it. So I, I don't know what it is. I came back to turn on the camera and acknowledge the weird feeling and pull some cards and see what's going on because there is apparently this extra message about time and I think it has to do with we don't all need to agree on time and even that we don't need to have a a time consensus. We don't need to have a time consensus. Um, let's see what cards just flew out. Seven of Wands. So <laughs> that's kind of how I felt, right? Every every time I heard myself say Age of Pisces or Thousands of Years or something like that, it was like every time I referenced time uh, or or some kind of era in the video, I felt kind of amb like like this. I felt a little bit like I was up high and there was people trying to get me with sticks, right? Uh, like like, um, and I don't know if the like weird feeling is coming from myself or from others like i don't know if i'm projecting or or what it, it's a, it, it it's like i'm very confused this is very strange and you know as as i'm feeling this now um it feels like uh i'm trying because i am because i am because it's aries season and there is this um i'm separating myself i'm growing up out of the quagmire that was all of the Aquarius and Pisces energy and we have this Aquarius and Pisces energy still happening in the background so it's like um it, it's like there's these energetic tentacles reaching out and trying to like suck me back in try to suck me back down I'm I'm like rising up out of the quagmire and there's these like little tendrils trying to suck me back down not in like a bad way not in a nefarious way it's it's just like a magnet <laughs> it's like just a magnet right that like a magnet is not bad nor good it just it's just a pull it's just there's this pull like or gravity even it's like this pull of gravity to pull to trying to like pull me back down and here i am you know queen of wands going like <laughs> no <laughs> i do what i want right fully empowered queen of wands and something I'm working on right something I'm working on so it, it, very interesting I feel like this whole strange experience of listening to myself talk and then having getting these weird vibes on the things I said and this strange message about time um, it's to do with drawing yourself up out of the collective drawing your energy into yourself right fully empowering yourself we had the queen of pentacles before and now it's the queen of wands um drawing into your own energy and there can be these feelings of gravity as if something is trying to draw you back down and i feel that we're each going to need to discern very carefully whether i mean and even even our discernment here might be, <laughs> might be, it might be very difficult to discern this. It might be very difficult to discern this. We basically, it could be, it could be that something or someone is trying to deliberately pull you back in to a situation. Something or someone could be trying to nefariously or manipulatively pull you into an energy you don't want to be, pull you into a place you want to be, or pull you back down, pull you back into something. Or it could be simply a function of the energy. It could just be like, you know, mud, right? You walk in mud, it's sticky, it sucks your boots, and you get stuck in the mud, right? It could just be that. Um, it could be our own subconscious fears um, or our own just subconscious baggage, whatever, um, trying to draw you back into a place that is comfortable, right? Trying to tell you, hey, you know, being being out there uh, like alone and loud and proud, that can be scary, right? Putting yourself up out there, putting yourself up on this pedestal, rising above the crowd, that can be scary. Wouldn't you rather just come down and be safe, right? <laughs> come down and be safe. So there's all these different ways that this could be happening. Um, and I think the message here is just like acknowledge acknowledge it and just keep burning bright anyway just keep burning bright en anyway um just being aware that there could be these energies drawing you try like attempting to draw you back down and but they can't actually do it right it, it's just it's a little bit like a an energetic whisper in your ear like a like a doubting a doubting a doubting voice in your ear right a doubting voice in your ear um and it's just something you can acknowledge and then set aside um and this is something you know you're going to be working on 
all, all of Aries season, right? Working on your own self-empowerment and working on allowing yourself to rise above the crowd or allowing yourself to be the bright light in the darkness, um, or just whatever it is for you, right? Whatever it is for you. And interestingly, there, I, I feel, I just <laughs> feel so strongly called to just state, um, this, 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 this thing about time. I, 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 maybe, maybe I wanted to get some more cards on that. Um, some, some other deck. What do I want? What do I want here? Aha. I, I occasionally get these strange messages about time and I never entirely know what to make of it, but it feels like, I mean, okay. So a new, new beginning, right? This fool card. I think we all agree here that, you know, time and his illusion, time is a construct, all of that. And within that we don't need to be agreeing on a any expression of time any experience of time we don't need to agree on it we don't need to agree on it and that's fine and that's that's just that um so this this <laughs> this fool right this zero this new beginning new beginning i mean how powerful to get this zero energy this fool energy on the aries equinox right Allowing everything to zero out. This is this energy of the clocks zeroing out. The clocks zeroing out. Something has reached zero and allowing a massive reset to our sense of time, allowing a massive reset to our, even our history of time and the way we interact with time moving forward. Nine of dicks, discs, culmination gaining your own sovereignty over your experience of time existing outside of time queen of wands again vibrancy so there is this other thing happening here it's like it's like separating yourself from time um the, okay so i th i think I, I think i see what what this is about although i'm this isn't the whole of this. This is only my initial impression. And I think this is going to be something we're going to be coming back to over the weeks that come, right? Where as you separate yourself from the collective, as you separate yourself from the muck and the murk, and even as you defy gravity, right? You're also actually separating yourself from the collective consensus of time and creating your own time construct, creating your own time system and there's resistance to that, like inside of yourself and outside of yourself, there is resistance to, to separating yourself from the collective time construct. Um, but this is, I think going to be something we're going to be working on for a very long time, because as we raise our frequency and become more multidimensional, we are going to be evolving our experience and perception of time to the, until we completely like I feel like I can feel it in my in my body, in my bones, in my back, in my shoulders. I, it's like I'm freeing myself from the cage of time, freeing myself from these constraints of time. And I don't know, I can't, I know this is pretty vague and, um, you know, but I, I can't get any more specific than that to just mention that this is this recurring theme of time is evolving, right? And our, our experience of time is evolving and somehow, some way in a way that I can't put my finger on or articulate or understand, we are reclaiming our sovereignty over our relationship to time and we are creating our own vehicle through which we interact with time. It's this feeling of separating yourself from time, existing outside of time. Um, and I think this whole process is something we ground slowly through various different cycles. At least I do, right? You're going to have your own experience of how you are busting out of the time construct and how you are grounding it, right? This is going to be entirely individual, an entirely individual process. And, um, for me anyway, it, it feels like this comes up for me consistently um, in this spiral fashion where slowly, 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 I, I, like every couple of months, I break more and more free of the time construct. And in doing so, I am slowly creating this 
it feels like a vehicle or, or a house. It's like I, I'm creating a place for myself to exist outside of time so that I can then explore multi-dimensional explore multi-dimensionality more freely and I'm just gonna have to leave it at that I'm sure that didn't really make much sense but I had to come back and explore this just a little bit because it was so strange it was so strange <laughs> listening to that video and getting these weird feelings every time I mentioned time so I'm just gonna leave it at that um I'm gonna upload this despite these weird feelings that I have because I feel like this is one of those moments um where it's like push forward despite the imperfections, push forward despite the like weird little doubting vibes and push forward knowing that not only is it unnecessary for everyone to agree, it's actually important that we don't all agree. It is very important that we don't all agree. Um, and honestly, that's something that helps me sleep at night because <laughs> um, one of my biggest fears in posting these videos is that somebody would take something I say like too seriously. Like some, I, I worry that people would take some things I say too seriously. So disagreement is valuable, important, and absolutely necessary. And it is something we can also experience. Uh, it's like we can experience disagreement with neutrality, right? We can experience it with complete neutrality and we can just value it for what it is. And without there being any any compulsion even to try to create agreement, right? We can just sit in disagreement. That's that's also gonna be a, um, a theme of Aries season, right? Um, with every single person lighting their own fire and burning brighter as an individual, there's going to be more disagreements. Um, so just getting okay with that and seeing the value in it and realizing that that is a, um, an act of, uh, you know, I, I don't wanna say self-protection, that's not exactly it. Um, cause it's, it's not really about protection, but it's like, it is, um, how do I put it? It, 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 it stops everybody from mixing together. It's like uh, diver like, you know, the strength of diversity. I know that's such a cliche to, to like say to you guys, cause obviously you guys understand, you guys all understand the strength of diversity, but to really just reflect just for a moment to reflect on already what you know, and what does that really mean? Right. Um, just think of, uh, an ecological system, right. An ecological system on the planet and the environment. If, um, if there's not enough genetic diversity in a species, right, then if when the species, when when a virus or a bacteria, some kind of disease comes along, and if there's not enough genetic diversity in the species, then the whole species will be wiped out because there will be not enough variation, right? But if a species has a ton of genetic diversity and um, there's lots of different types of immune systems and, and genes and stuff in the species, then um, one disease can't wipe out a whole species because the diversity is is protection from that, right? The diversity allows things to thrive um, and allows things to last. And that's why, <laughs> you know, that's why when someone disagrees with you and when, or like when you get multiple people together and everybody disagrees, everybody has a different view, that is so perfect and so beautiful. And that is such a source of strength, longevity, and like vitality for all of us moving forward. And um, okay, so this is going to be the actual end of the video. I love you guys. Bye.